Celtic's march to an inevitable seventh consecutive league title raises an obvious question. Is Scottish football dead? No, it's not dead. I'd say it's anything but. No, not at all. Absolutely not. No. No, because we have some other supporters. As long as this place is still going, then yeah. hey, Scottish football's not dead. I've been going to Scottish football since the 1970s. And if there's one thing that's been consistent, is that there's always been a narrative that Scottish football is in crisis. Is Scottish football dead? Yeah. Yes, it's impressive what Celtic are doing and fair, fair enough to them, they've deserved it, they've been the best team but unless you come up and experience that, it's quite hard to understand just how good Scottish football can actually be. Fans have become very quickly used to seeing this team sweep all before them. You know, Celtic have earned the right, They're, they are ahead of everybody at this moment in time but that won't be forever. They can spend more money and they can attract better players because of the crowds and the finances they have behind them. Aberdeen can't go for the title purely because of the monetary difference. Obviously when you play against Celtic, everybody realises it is the toughest match in the league. But in England, it's like when teams go to play Man City, they know it's going to be the toughest game in the league. But there's no game that you're going to go into when you think we can't win this game. You go in playing the way that you know you can play and as we've shown this season, we've actually had a couple of good results against them. When Aberdeen play Celtic, my expectation at the moment is we'll get pumped. <laughs> Every game's extremely competitive. I and mean, we've played them four times. We've taken them right to the last minute. We're beating them 1-0, and we drew 0-0 with 10 men very recently. So no match is ever a foregone conclusion. I'm sure Celtic and, and Brendan would be the first to tell you that. You know, coming away from Celtic, well, a, a point is, is a great thing. If we play well and Celtic play badly, we can maybe get a good result, get a draw. But just that little bit more drive or that little bit more, that's all it takes. <laughs> it's just for a couple of teams to go, no, who, who do you think you are? You know, and, and go for it, and it would be a different game. Every year I just hope to qualify for Europe. I don't really mind if we finish second, third or fourth, as long as we qualify for Europe and get a good cup run in either the League Cup or the Scottish Cup. If we survive in the Premier League, that'll do us. Maybe get a wee run in the Scottish Cup, League Cup. I've only ever seen my team win one trophy, uh, so winning a cup's a special day. So if we do that, I'll get the chance to do that every year, I'm happy with that. It struck me the other day that it is kind of tragic that we're now at 32 years since somebody outside of the old firm won the title. With the absolutely anomalous but wonderful exception of Leicester a few years ago, you can go back and look at there's only been a handful of clubs won the English Premiership as well. Nobody's won a top flight title outside Rangers or Celtic since what, 83 or whatever it is, so those fans are still uh, going to games, they're still really passionate about it, they still love their clubs, they still want the clubs to succeed. You look at any league around the world, there's always that one club there seems to be, like in Spain you've got the El Clasico, in Germany you've got Bayern Munich. Everybody says that Celtic is easy for them or that, but you look at the Celtic fans and you look at the way they celebrate when they do win the league, obviously it's not as straightforward as people think. Everybody goes on about, you know, Celtic sitting at the top and Rangers sitting at the top and things, because everybody else is scared for the relegation when they shouldn't, they should open up and really try and go for it because when they do, they have beaten them. Everybody respects what Celtic have done and obviously the circumstances they've done it and it's like special last season going undefeated, it is a really special achievement but no point do you have to bow down to them or anything, it's just about going out and proving that you deserve to be there. There's been so many things that have happened in Scottish football over the last few seasons that have been good. You know, teams like uh, Kilmarnock, like St Mirren, Inverness, Ross County all winning major trophies and I think that's, that was really good. Um, so I think there's still a lot of good stuff going on. Motherwell reaching two cup finals this season has been brilliant for them. There's still plenty of competition, there's still plenty to be positive about. There's more to a league than just who wins it at times. It always annoys when people talk down Scottish football, but I think it mainly happens because we're next door to England and there's this big fancy league with all the money, but it's not got any of the, the passion that you get here. People have got a, like a feeling about Scottish football, which I don't believe is true. And us especially, the way we've been doing recently, I think that we show that any club when they're on their game can be as good as they want to be. I believe there's a lot of ignorance. I played all my career in, in England. 
Uh, I'll be honest, I was one of them. I didn't have an idea how big it was, um, how good it was, the crowds, the stadia, the media attention. I think you'll struggle to get a league that's full of honesty, that's full of passion. Like you look at the derby, you've got the Dundee derby, passionate, you've got the Edinburgh derby, there's a few games that have been on TV this year just to show us like the the roar and the thunder of playing such amazing games. I don't think the, the league gets quite the recognition that it should do. We obviously haven't performed well in European competitions for a long time and, and the international stage, so I understand that part of it, but at a domestic level, where we are, for the size of country we are, we have so many people going to games per head of population and, and things like that. There is a lot of quality here, there's a lot of good young players, a lot of good young Scottish players coming through as well, and it's maybe about time people started singing the praises of it instead of finding fault. Players and fans still seem connected, you can still have a bit of a laugh between each other, a bit of banter. You wouldn't believe the banter in the atmosphere of the away games. It's girls, you know, people uh, berate the club and berate each other. Uh, any minor thing that happens in Scottish football gets picked on and savage to bits and it doesn't matter what it is. And last week it was Hearts Lego Bus, yesterday it was Air United and their half-naked model model on the strip. It doesn't matter what it is, at what level. Uh, it will get picked on and savaged, and it's great. It's the Scottish thing, we kind of like being down on ourselves a little bit, but actually we've got a very dark sense of humour, and I think that's what drives our game forward, and I, I love it to bits. Even at the times we hark back to, when we talk about like, the early 80s, when Aberdeen were winning European trophies, Dundee United were in European finals, and we had a, a, a greater variety of clubs in contention for the title, with different clubs winning the title, Back then, it was always Scottish football was in crisis, and what are we going to do about it? Some things will never change. Plus, our shows, plus our name shows. Yeah.